Hello, Kelly Berry. How are you today? Lisa, I am doing great, and uh, I'm in a different place here. This is uh, this is cool. <laughs> we got our headphones on. We got our professional microphones. Hey, we yeah. are sounding and looking great. <laughs> we have a great episode today, Lisa. So women in boating, some really cool things going on there. A tiger sharks traveling thousands of miles. I even have Ooh. an app on my phone that tracks the, the, the sharks. So it's uh, it's going to be cool to talk about that and uh, tips for fall boating season. Also, uh, our social update with Landon, uh, we are gonna be getting into some really cool things uh, that do include uh, babies on the water and some really cool uh, other boating social options. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. Uh, we'd like to welcome everybody officially to From the Helm Boating Broadcast. We are yeah. your hosts, I am Lisa. Kelly. And he is Kelly. Hey, oh, good to okay. see you. Uh, interact with us in the comments section if you like what you see. Please share it with your friends and family. The more the merrier. For yeah. our audio-only listeners, thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to see what you're hearing, we are on YouTube. We're on Facebook. Uh, you can also access more boating broadcasts online at mm -hmm. marinemax.com and underneath the Lifestyles blog section or the Marine Max app. You can under, uh, access from the Helm uh, boating broadcast episodes there as well. All right, so let's get into headlines. Sure. Article number one. This is so cool. I th I think it is at least. Um, Boattest.com has been doing this little mini series yep. about women in boating. Yes. And uh, this episode, it's part two in their mini documentary. And uh, it covers everything from Viking Leif Erikson's sister, Freydis, who mm -hmm. is one of the first known European women to set foot on North America at the northern tip of Newfoundland in wow. an expedition dated back to uh, 1004 AD uh, to Chris mm. Carroll, president of Grady White, Michelle Doshi, CMO at Mercury Marine, to our very own Abby Hymanson, director of marketing here at Marine Max. Well, let's, uh, for the viewers out there, we'll, we'll play a little bit. I'll, I'll just kind of turn down the audio just so we can get a visual. And uh, uh, But hey, Captain Steve, we know him pretty well, huh? From BoatTest.com. We do know him. He's been doing an excellent job with these interviews. Yes, yes. I mean, he's uh, he's a pro when it comes to uh, uh, interviews and just boat information in general, and uh, and it's pretty cool that they put this on. Uh, of course, you know, a lot of people are doing the uh, the the interview style um, online, similar to what we're doing here, Lisa. Um, and it's mm -hmm. pretty cool also that we have our very own uh, Marine Max uh, marketing director, Abby Hymanson, uh, who is a guest on this. This particular. Yep, she actually closes out that episode. So I think it's maybe there she yeah. is. Cool. <laughs> Let me see here. Talking about Lake ok Okoboji there. I'm just scrubbing through. Oh, yep. I think I've seen that picture before. Yeah. But I, hey, I mean, yeah, Lake Okoboji. Um, yeah. That's a fun word to say for sure. And a beautiful lake up there in the north, the Midwest. Um, so shout out to all the boaters out there that, that hang out uh, at Lake Okoboji. Yes. And Captain Steve does a great job with this mini document documentary. Yep. He goes into the history of women in boating and then interviews of people um, who are in positions in the boating industry today. So it, mm -hmm. it's a really cool series. It's, it's kind of fun to go back and look at it like through the eyes of uh, women boaters. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very exciting. And of course, you can it's check tough. out the, the full uh, interview, um, uh, the full episode, including the interview with Abby Hymanson uh, on BoatTest.com. And while you're there, maybe check out a, a cool boat test from one of our galleons, Azimuth's, Ocean Alexanders. They, they've tested them all. Yep, they do a great job over there. All right, so let's keep on uh, moving. Keep on keeping um, on. The second thing, yeah, keep on keeping on. The second thing we wanted to uh, share with you all is this really cool article, again, from Boat Test. Mm -hmm. um, this is about a tiger shark that was tagged and has traveled over 4,000 miles. So, wow. you know, quite the distance. And tiger sharks, I wish we had Landon here right now. I mean, because he's our, our usual nature guru. Um, but yes, uh, yeah, found in many places of the ocean. I think they're also, um, they can go to many places too. I mean, I think that they've, maybe I'm thinking of the bull shark, but I know that, uh, you know, they can be found even in like rivers and, mm -hmm. uh, and which is mostly like That's fresh terrifying. Water. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, from OSearch, which is actually what we were talking about, the app, um, they mm. allow you to see exactly where these sharks are are going in the world. And apparently uh, this one has been pinged off of uh, eastern Africa uh, around mm -hmm. Sri Lanka and looks like um, 
um, like Madagascar area possibly? Yeah, so this is a 10 foot four female tiger shark named Saria. Uh, she was tagged off the African uh, country of Mozambique in 2018 and then was detected this past April, about 800 miles off the Indonesian coast. So mm -hmm. a transoceanic journey of more than 4,000 miles, which is quite the distance. So um, very cool stuff here. And of course, all these research projects are funded. Um, this one specifically, Save Our Seas Foundation, in addition to, to National Geographic and the Guy Harvey Institute. So a couple of big players were involved in uh, this research. Well, it's cool. It's cool stuff. And and uh, if you ever if you ever get a chance to see how they actually do this, um, I, you know, like they'll they'll catch the shark, which I think a lot of them, a lot of times they just catch it on like a line, like you know, like you're actually yeah. fishing. Uh, they bring it in, they tag it, and then they release it back into the wild. And then at that point, it's basically a smart shark, where <laughs> you can you can literally go on your phone and see uh, where in the world these sharks go. And and just the fact that they can, uh, you know, that they move four thousand, they can they literally cross oceans, you know, go to to the tip of Africa all the way to the southern tip of Africa, and uh, just to find food, do their thing, right? Yeah. Well, they got to keep moving because that's how they breathe. So yep. they've, they've got a, I, is that, is that true for all shark species? I think there's a few that, that don't need to, there's a couple, I well, think they can kind of stop, um, but not many. I nurse think sharks. Yeah. Like I've I, seen nurse sharks, like kind of like settle on the bottom. I think uh, they're one think, of the uh, only ones, but yeah. yeah. But tiger sharks specifically, the article goes into more detail, but it talks about how they have to keep moving in order to breathe because the the water running over their gills and through mm -hmm. their mouth is how they take in oxygen, which is really cool. So yeah. um good stuff. Definitely give that article a read. It's it's fun. I love I love learning about nature. And, and you're right, Landon will would love this <laughs> this article. We'll have to share it with him. Well, and just think if we had to keep moving too. Like, what if we couldn't just sit here and do this? We would have to be like on the go and be like, Lisa. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving because I have to. And, uh, you know, we're, we're heading to a different place uh, just because uh, that's the way it is. I think uh, selfie sticks would be very popular if we had. Yeah. To keep well, and good thing that boats exist, too, because you could always, you know, if, if you don't have to actually move your feet, but you just need to be moving in a direction, you know, you could yeah. always be cruising on a boat. Right. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Another reason to per to go and, and, and enjoy the boating lifestyle. Yeah. And you know what? Although summer is winding down. There is something special to be said about fall boating, and yep. especially if you're in some of the northern states where you can get those crisp, you know, days and go out on the lake and watch the colors change. That's mm -hmm. one of my favorite things to do. In in I, I love going to visit my family in Michigan in the fall just to go see the colors change. So summer's over, but the best boating season begins right now. And we have a great article from Forbes.com that goes in a little bit more detail about how you guys can get the best out of your fall boating season. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it's cool to see uh, companies, uh, let's hide that ad there real quick. Uh, okay. That's like taking up the entire, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it is really cool to see, uh, you know, people, uh, from Forbes magazine getting into the world of boating here. And, uh, like you said, I think, uh, up in the, the Midwest is some of the best boating you can do in the fall. Uh, it's just so many cool things going on. And as you see in that picture, just beautiful, uh, tranquil waters, the, you know, the, oh, the yeah. leaves changing on the trees. Uh, wow. What a cool spot there. I love how it's glass and it reflects the, the, like the tree line Yep, is there's perfect symmetry between the actual trees and the reflection in the water. I love photos like that. It's gorgeous. You can call, you can almost like hear what it sounds like being mm -hmm. there, right? Just the silence in yep. itself is uh, you can hear that. Um, so, so some of the topics that they go through here is, uh, is number one is you've got the waterways to yourself on a fall boating trip. Uh, popular Very waterways true. can be packed in the summertime. Very true. Um, but when, when fall hits, basically, you know, it kind of quiets down a little bit and, uh, you know, their, their, uh, quietness is your reward to get out on the water and just enjoy the boating lifestyle a little bit with, with less traffic on, on the water. Yeah. Right. Yep. Not, not as many tours in, uh, November, <laughs> October, November, yep. uh, water, water temps may dip, but the air temps are still pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's perfect. And even if you got to, you know, toss a, uh, you know, jacket on or something like that, a light jacket, mm -hmm. it's, it's not that bad. It's, it's, uh, in, very enjoyable to get out there in the, the fall time. Um, and yeah. it also, uh, 
It says uh, encouraging first time boaters to take a boat education course and follow their pre departure checklist. Um, so basically, you know, hey, here's a good time to just learn a little bit, get ready to rock and roll for next season, and you'll be ready to, to just get out there and, and go boating uh, full bore as opposed yep. to, you know, starting the season itself out trying to learn how to, to run your boat. Yeah, excellent advice. I love number two on this list. Leaf peeping by boat is downright spectacular. <laughs> Leaf peeping. <laughs> yeah. right? uh, that's a, that's a good way of putting it but yeah i mean uh yeah up there just uh, the colors that you see and uh, before all the leaves drop off it's just uh look at this uh, keep an eye on the foliage tracker i wonder if they have like an o search style tracker for all the foliage up in the up in the north oh that's nice well, I think you can uh, keep track of it on any social media platform. Everybody loves posting photos of mm -hmm. the, the color change and how it's, you know, maybe 30 degrees one day and then 70 the next day, but you still have those beautiful fall colors that are starting to transition. Yep. Um, and who doesn't love playing guitar at the end of the dock with your dogs? Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen anybody <laughs> do that, but I'm sure that there are people that sit at the end of a dock and play guitar with their dogs. Uh, but that's a cool shot there. I mean, just uh, looks like a pretty good lake to catch some northern pike or something like that for sure. Oh, yeah. Maybe <laughs> not at the end of the dock, but we've definitely had uh, the guitar player around the bonfire right by the water. Yes. Uh, you know, with family friends, kicking your feet up on a cooler, roasting some marshmallows. Yep. I think there's something to be said about not just always, you know, even when you get back from a day out on the water to just relax next to the water. You know, you got the boat docked right there yep. and you're just kicking back. You're playing guitar on the dock. You're, you know, playing guitar around the bonfire. I mean, there's just so many cool things you could do uh, in the fall. Yeah, roasting marshmallows. I mean, uh, just uh, some of the best memories uh, you have are, are those kind of memories, right, Lisa? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, fall lends itself to many vacations on the water, which I yep. totally agree with. I mean, even yeah. if you, you don't live by the water, renting a cabin or even an Airbnb or a VRBO, uh, somewhere where you could maybe take kayaks out or, um, you know, I was going to say paddleboard, but that might be a little risky. Although I have seen people paddleboarding on our lake up in Michigan um, in December. We had a very unusually Jeez. warm December <laughs> and the guys had on like jackets, but they were paddleboarding. Like that is Rats. brave. <laughs> well, and I think, yeah, I think it's partly... Um, it's part of the rush too, right? Of, uh, getting out there and being like, if I fall in, yeah. it's going to be rough, but, um, it's good. but yeah, <laughs> it's going to be cold, cold. Um, but you know, that's, that's part of the Northern way too, is to kind of, to, to do what others wouldn't do when it comes to the cold. I remember just wearing shorts whenever it was above freezing, you're like, I'm wearing shorts because it's been <laughs> negative 17 degrees all winter long. Oh Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Hey, there you go. There's your, your paddle boarders right there, uh, yeah. enjoying some time. And uh, it's kind of cool that some of these boats, uh, you know, some of these 30, 40 foot boats, they actually have a lot of storage space where you can actually put yeah. the, um, the paddle boards directly onto the boat and just store them away as opposed to kind of putting them out where you have to walk around them and yeah. they get in the way. I think the, uh, SLX 400, I could yes. be wrong. I'm pretty sure it has some some space for uh, putting your paddleboard away like that. Yeah, it's starting the the boating industry is starting to catch on that people love to go boat out and then you bring paddleboards, bring bring yeah. other toys that are quite large. So engineering those spaces to to accommodate for for you know bigger toys is mm -hmm. is something that we're starting to see more and more of, which is very cool. Um, cool weather proves perfect for active adventures. There's some kayaking going on. Yes. Yeah, another cool image here of uh, some people out on a lake, which, you know, it's kind of weird that I'm always thinking of what lure I would use in these particular lakes here. And they so far it's changed in every one of them pretty much. You'd probably want to use like, you know, some a weedless lure of some type here or something <laughs> to get, get around all this brush. But um, yeah, I mean, cool weather proves for active adventures. Yeah, it's a good way to, to just uh, burn some calories too, right? Get in yep. shape while you're out there. Absolutely. Just because the, the temp drops doesn't mean you're done enjoying the water for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think the last point in this article is great. The fifth fifth one is fall boating offers a wellness boost before winter. Yep. And that couldn't be more true, especially when you get those beautiful fall days, when the sun is out shining between the reds and yellows 
of, of the leaves and you're out on the water, you get that peaceful calm that you just, you, 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 everybody knows what I'm talking about, but you can hear the calmness. Yep. Yeah, yeah. you, you certainly can. And during these, uh, these times of, uh, you know, craziness and, and always being cooped up just to get out there, especially a, a little chill is always a good thing too. I mean, especially, uh, just to kind of, uh, settle you down, get you, let you relax a little bit. And, and like you said, just, you know, there's, there's always that calmness going with, uh, um, getting excited or, or, or getting prepared for something where, you know, you're going to be inside a lot in the near right. future. Um, yep. For sure. Unless you live in Florida. And then you know what? We play all we play all year long. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, even the people in the north, they always uh, try to find a way to get to the water. And, uh, you know, if they're ice fishing or whatever else, yeah. you said that you, you even in <laughs> Michigan one time, you saw some people out on the on the water in, in December. So, yep. Um, you can always find a way, I feel. <laughs> but that's a, that's a pretty cool, uh, yeah, a great list from Forbes here. Just talking about you know all the cool things that you know you guys can be thinking about uh, when it comes to boating uh, and enjoying the water when the when the weather gets a little bit cooler than typical. Yes, good call, good call. All right, that is a wrapping up our headlines section. Let's mm -hmm. move on into our next segment here. You have seen them all over social media, Facebook, YouTube. They're number oh, yeah. one in our hearts. We got <laughs> Captain Keith. Lake and Captain Nick Pavlakis, the stars of Boating Tips Live. Welcome to our show, guys. How you guys doing? Hey, great. Thanks for having us. I, this Nick, is awesome. I, <laughs> I have to say, this is like the first time the, the planets, uh, they're, they're colliding here. The worlds are colliding. And what, welcome to our show. We appreciate having you on today. Oh, this is like this is like one of the greatest collaborations of all time. This reminds me of like when I was a kid, and you'd have like a crossover episode between like Scooby Doo and uh, oh yeah, and something else. Like it's like it's like when when the Simpsons, like Homer Simpson, is on Family Guy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there, exactly. The, the best of both worlds. Um, so this is kind of a, a fun uh, episode, and we wanted to showcase all the great things that Captain Keith and Captain Nick do every week. Uh, of course, you can always check them on Boating Tips Live on both you. Well, I won't say both YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, uh, basically anywhere where you can uh, listen to a, a podcast as well. So uh, thank you guys for being on. Uh, if you want to kind of give the uh, the viewers out there an overview of what Boating Tips is, or I mean, and, and kind of how it started too. So uh, Keith, why don't you kick us off and tell us a little bit about uh, the Boating Tips and Boating Tips Live? Well, I think, I mean, Kelly and I have been doing these, you know, Marine Max boating safety tips, you know, for a long time. Yep. And uh, then it just kind of morphed into somebody had an idea, hey, why don't, you know, you and Nick get together, collaborate and see if we can go and do this live and uh, kind of keep it upbeat, but then ask us any kind of questions you want. And then we can, you know, one week we might get into some service training stuff or, uh, you know, boating techniques or just different things and have different guests on. But uh, it's just kind of like just a captain's chat corner, right? Mm -hmm. Nick and I sit down and kind of shoot the breeze and, you know, it's starting to build up some momentum. So through Facebook and YouTube, now we got people join in and ask us questions. And I mean, we've been doing it now, I think 21 weeks. And I mean, time flies now. It's just, yeah. you know, Nick will probably tell you when he gets on here, how nervous he would get, you know, I mean, before our first episode, I don't think he slept for three days, you know? <laughs> Is that true, Nick? Still, I still get nervous, just uh, not, <laughs> not as nervous. I, I tell Keith, you know, like when we have our countdown, when I see like two minutes, a minute and a half, I, I get so excited, guys, like. You, you don't even know. <laughs> so, Nick, well, tell us a little tell. bit about it. Uh, tell us uh, what goes into kind of the preparation of, of each and every episode. So, the every single episode, for the most part, we're going to have a topic and stuff like that. But, but in essence, the the each Boating Tips Live episode is fueled by the viewers. It's fueled by the questions that we'll get in. So, we, I mean, our greatest episodes have been where we just kind of shoot from the hip and. Yeah, people just pour in with the with the comments in the comment section, and and we yep. can go a million different ways, and, and and we'll and we will get to all of them each and every week. So we, we'll try to stick to the topic, but we'll we'll try to answer every question too. But you know, Keith and I will actually part of the preparation, like you're talking about. We'll go on every single week to the episode from the episode before in the comment section. And we'll say, hey, I didn't get Brian's question. Hey, um, Stephen's question, I never got to that, and you know, or, or yeah. hey. Roger's question, we said we'd have to check with, you know, our service team. So Keith might go check with, 
Mike Nolan there at Clearwater. I'll, I'll go over to Bruce Laporta, our service manager at St. Pete. And I've even sat down in the middle of the service room, you know, when they're just kind of hanging out, you know, before the end of the day at five o'clock or whatever it may be and sit down and say, Hey, anybody want to answer some questions? And they'll, uh, they'll rattle off different, different solutions to the problems that we might not be able to get to on air. <laughs> That's pretty so. awesome. So you're, you're actually troubleshooting with viewers, uh, what, what they're going through, uh, just live on Facebook or YouTube. Yep. For the most part. And, and, uh, like you said, you know, I mean, we've got all the resources in the world here at Marine Max. Right. I mean, everybody knows that. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've been here at Clearwater for 19 years doing this and I've delivered thousands and thousands of boats, met tens of thousands of people. Um, and that's, that's what's so cool about it. You know, I mean, just all the friendships you develop over the years, but you know, the questions you get and we get bring in new people all the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of easy to, to work your way into that and answer those questions. I mean, we've got a basic outline kind of before we go live mm -hmm. each week, but who knows where it morphs off to. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's some of the best, like you were mentioning, you know, is, uh, is some of just letting people ask their questions. I mean, you always have a topic, which is great, but a lot of times people just are always, you know, either out on the water the, the weekend a, a few days previous or, mm -hmm. or they just always have a, a question to ask and, and allowing some play, some people the ability to just pop something in there and you guys being the experts answer it. That's, that's huge. And that's something that, you know, they can't get in many other places. Mondays, I mean, we hear it all the time where everybody's just, I mean, nobody wants to go to work on a Monday and, and I'll tell you how excited I get, you know, I, I hear all the time, all right, Nick, enough about the boats. All right, stop talking about the boats, Nick, and just to, to have the comments roll in and everybody just ask us questions. It's, it's surreal. It's, it's a dream come true. Oh, that's so cool. So we, we got to hear a little bit about Captain Keith's background. Nick, mm -hmm. give us a little bit more in depth about your background in the boating industry in Marine Max. Yeah, so I've I've been on boats pretty much my whole life, you know, since I was a kid working, you know, as mates on charter boats and stuff like that up in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and down here also just just always being out on the water. And, and then when I was still in college, I, I saw Marine Max, I knew I was always going to be around the boat. So I found, you know, the, the 800 pound gorilla. And I said, you know what, I don't I don't care where I start there. I don't care if I'm scrubbing toilets. And that's exactly what I did. I, you know, came in as an, as an, as an assistant dock hand, and then they found out I had my captain's license and was able to, you know, take the reins on some deliveries and stuff like that. And nice. then when I graduated college, I, I, I went into sales. So then I started selling boats at Marine Max St. Pete and it's, it's, it's a dream come true. You know, this Marine Max journey, it's, you know, we, we've talked about it before, you know, just always being on a cutting edge, always seeing stuff right when it comes out. Yeah. You know, all the resources in the world, you know, they, Marine Max flew me up to Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, to the mercury plant. They've they they put me over at Boston Whaler and Edgewater, Florida, the whaler plant. And it's just like each and every day you wake up, I'm like a kid in a candy store and just you, you, <laughs> get, to, you, you get to take it all in and and. Uh, and that's how I kind of ended up right here and and how I ended up, you know, on, on Boating Tips Live, you know, I, I put quite a bit of walkthrough videos out on YouTube and and I did a walkthrough video one day to just kind of be a, 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 a smart little kid and just and just kind of make fun of some walkthrough videos. And then my boss, Joshua at, at Marine Max in St. Pete said, all right, Nick, congratulations. You're doing all the walkthrough videos. So, <laughs> so I had a, that, that, that kind of became one of my things. So. Well, I guess, you know, it's it's uh, advertising in a, in a good way, too. They're just making videos and putting them out there or on YouTube, just like Boating Tips Live. It's out on YouTube. It's out on Facebook for the whole world to see. I mean, there's there's major benefits to that. Oh, and if you see us out in public, too, shout us out. I can't tell you how much I love being at boat shows and, and somebody saying, you know, hey, I saw your walkthrough video here. Or, hey, I watch Boating Tips Live episode with you and Keith every week. I mean, that yeah. that's that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. crazy. I mean, the, how how the recognition or how much this is built up and, and stuff. I mean, I'm delivering a boat down to Marco Island and I'm way back in some Marina somewhere. And I was like, Hey, there's captain Keith or whatever. I like your videos. <laughs> People coming in the door here, you know, buying new boats and they're watching these videos. And it's like, like they already seem like they, they know you, you know, when, mm -hmm. when you're yeah. starting up. So um, it's pretty cool. Well, that's, I think that that's huge though. Just, just being a, a team member that can, answer questions for somebody. I mean, I don't know in, in my professional field of knowing photo and video, just answering questions for people is one of the most uh, 
biggest benefits for me at least. So I think, you know, when, when you're in the, the world of boating and boat sales and fishing and all these different things, allowing people to ask their questions and you having the answers, or at least knowing the people that you can provide the answers to is, is really mm -hmm. big. Mm. No, Speaking of fishing is, too, oh, uh, Lisa, I knew I'll you were going to go. go. Well, because, you know, I mean, some of the strongest episodes that we've been doing uh, are certainly some of our fishing episodes. And I know both of you guys are huge into fishing. Uh, we'll start with Nick. Nick, what are some of the things about fishing and boating? Combine those two things together uh, that really get you going every day. Uh, I, I I love being out, being out on the water in general. And, you know, I think that's a type of my perfect day in the water fishing might be a little different than some other folks uh, I uh, when I wake up in the morning I, I want to catch fish and that's and, and that's what it is all about but there's uh there's also something special about you know being out on the water and you know catching fish almost becomes secondary and just kind of enjoying the people around you and 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 you know looking back on it you know in times when I was a little kid and stuff like that you know you, you don't realize the memories you're, you're creating I mean like right. when, a, when a boat is sold or, or when somebody buys a, bo a boat you're, you're, you're not buying a boat. You're buying, you're buying those memories, you know, with your kids or your grandkids or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. You're, 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 yep. you're buying, you're, you're buying that, that time that you can't get on a couch, you know, you can't get on a video games and that's, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what makes boating so special. Yep. I'm going to have to agree with that. And I know Keith, you probably would too. Um, you get to go on a lot of different fun trips. I know scalloping is, is one of the excursions you get to go on or you get to lead um, what other fishing adventures do you go on? Like when you're well, not with Marine X? Well, just going offshore fishing with my buddies or, you know, yeah. we do some, you know, some tournament fishing and stuff like that. Used years ago, we were into it really, really hot and heavy, but um, a lot of it's just kind of the anticipation and the preparation and the camaraderie. So mm -hmm. like if you're in a, you're fishing on a tournament team, you know, somebody's making the rig, somebody's in charge of something else. Somebody's, you know, and then you've got to have trust in all the components of that to put it all together. Right. And then, you know, once it all comes together, you know, you got your bait, you're heading offshore and, you know, watching a sunrise. Uh, and like yeah. Nick said, it's just part of being out there. I mean, if you catch fish, great. You know, there's, there's two different, you know, if you're tournament fishing, you're really focused on the fish, but you just want to go out and have a good time. You know, just, I mean, a whale shark comes by and you can dive in the water and swim with yep. it or, you know, just watching the bait shower on the, on the water surface, you know, uh, it's, it's going to date me, but you know, like the little, the little river band, cool yeah. change. If you just think about that song, you know, the whales and the albatross are my brothers or whatever and all that whole goofy stuff, but it's kind of yep. like the way it is out there. You know, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's kind of a religious type thing. You get away from everything. The water's crystal clear. Your blood pressure goes down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you can just kind of take a deep breath. It's a sore subject for me, Keith. You know, I haven't found a whale or I haven't seen a whale shark. And, like, I'm, like, uh, the only one out of my friends that has never seen one. And it, and it bothers me till this day that I have not came across a whale shark by chance. I mean, you can't exactly go looking for them. But right. I'll tell you what, if, if I go my whole life and I never see a whale shark, I'm it's incredible. Be, it's just so, pretty upset. You just have to put so it out massive. there. You got to be in the right place put, at the right time. And, put it uh, out there in the universe. I'm seeing a whale shark today. Next time you go out, put it out in the universe. Is this a common looking? thing? Yeah. I've never seen a whale shark. I haven't. Everybody. I think, in the do, I think there's tours, right? You can go to see the whale sharks where, the, where they'll bring you to them, too. There are. <laughs> We'll get you hooked All up right. with one, Nick. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure there's. We, we probably know some people that are close to the whale sharks. So, Key West. I'm pretty sure there, there's a lot of them down in Key West, and even I'm guessing possibly even around here. But all right. So, uh, yeah. So fishing is big for these guys, and I'm going to bring up real quick to um, the website. So if if you guys want to learn more about uh, the Boating Tips Live crew or Boating Tips Live the series, uh, be sure to check them out on Marimax.com. Uh, you can uh, just Google Boating Tips Live, or you can also, you know, find them, uh, of course, on YouTube, on uh, the podcast. If you want Spotify, we are now on Amazon Podcasts, I believe, too, yes, Lisa. Um, yes, but this is the landing page where you can learn more about and see the latest episodes of Boating Tips Live. Uh, this was from the previous episode. This was Ask Us Anything, which which the captain stated that uh, is some of their most powerful episodes, just because it's 
we're opening it up to anything you want. Um, so yeah. this is a pretty cool picture here, Keith. Where, where was this shot taken? That was uh, Crystal River, running, running out the river in a Boston Whaler uh, 24 Pro. Yeah, the Pro. Dauntless, oh. The 24 Pro Dauntless, yeah. Yep. And that looks There's like uh, St. Pete, the, the store. Yeah, that's the basin. Yep. Very nice. cool. Well, you uh, both definitely have a boatload of experience, pun intended. Nice, nice. So um, I know even if we have a topic for the show, you guys have gone rogue and, and talk, answered questions about people backing in their trailers or spark mm -hmm. plugs. So I think that's one thing to point out is if people are watching and they have a question that's not related to the topic, go ahead and drop it in there anyway. This okay. is the best way I can describe it is, you know, you have guys that are, they might be obsessed with different things. You got like car guys, you've got, you know, whatever. Keith and I, we're, we're boat guys. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so, so come on in and talk to us about boats. Tell us a story, ask us questions, whatever it is. We want to hear it just as much as you guys do. And there's probably a lot of people out there tuning in that want to hear it also. For sure. Yeah. Lisa, what right. questions do you have for the captains? Do you, do you have like a boating question? You could just think of the, off the top of your head to try to stump these guys. I do, well, maybe not stump, but just something I've been thinking about. <laughs> sure. I think this might be a Captain Keith question because I know that uh, uh -oh. he, he deals with a lot of life jackets. So if I want to buy a nice life jacket, but I want to use it for paddle boarding, but I also want to have it to bring out on the boat, so I need it to be, uh, be able to satisfy both of those conditions. Do you have any recommendations for something that's sleek enough for paddleboard, but something that's durable enough to be out in the open ocean? Open ocean and that, no, but if you're close, you're near shore, uh, like a type three, a vest, but then there's also the inflatables, like the yeah. suspenders that you could wear that just, you know, go over and buckle up. There's actually a, a video. If you look through the uh, boating tips uh, videos we've got on YouTube mm -hmm. where you and I were, were out on yep. a dock and, and you popped the cord and, and blew that up. Um, they've also got them like in a belt, like a fanny pack. I've seen those. So, so, you know, and then there's different types. So the some will automatically deploy some you have to pull. So I'd probably imagine if you're on a paddleboard, you're going to want the one that you have to manually deploy because I know I would end up in a drink and things would be blowing <laughs> yeah. up all the time on me. Yeah, I don't want to have to, you know, pay to re get it stuffed, get and, another cartridge. Right. And also those suspenders, though, the, the inflatable ones do not count as a PFD, a personal flotation device, that's unless right. you've actually got it on. So if it's just sitting with you in the boat and that's the only thing you got, you've got nothing. you got to wear it. All right. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Kelly, do you have more fish questions? Yeah. How'd you know? It wasn't really a question. It was more like, well, I guess it is a question. Yeah. Or but do it you was want more to tell a fish like story? A, um, well, all I wanted to know is if you could catch or what's your favorite inshore fish to catch and what's your favorite offshore fish to catch? That, that's that's what I'm tossing out. And I guess I'll ask uh, Keith first and then and then Nick. Inshore has got to be tarpon. Um, and then offshore, you know, here on the West Coast, you know, I love the blackfin tuna that we get. You yep. know, uh, we got a good grouper and bottom fishing snapper season. Uh, we'll get sailfish bycatch. Uh, so it's, it doesn't really matter, man. As long as that reel's singing <laughs> and you got something on there pulling back, that's all that matters. Very nice. Nick, what's, what's, what's your faves? Yeah, I mean, my favorite time of the year inshore also, just like he said, is tarpon fishing. You know, we're, we're blessed to have a phenomenal tarpon fishery here in, you know, St. Petersburg and the Tampa Bay area. Offshore, I'm a kingfish guy. I mean, I, I live my year for mm -hmm. you know, kingfish tournament season. There's And, and it's, it's not even the fishing. It's the prep. It's the, it's the anticipation. And it's when that reel goes off and, and you're fishing, you've got money on the line. It's that camaraderie with your team. And it's, and, and that's what I live for. Non-tournament, I'd say like grouper fishing offshore. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. For sure. All right. Well, thanks guys. That's we good. appreciate you stopping by. Uh, if they want to learn more about you, I know you have some social media channels, anything you guys want to, you know, plug toss out there other than of course, boating tips live on Facebook, YouTube, everywhere else. Uh, what am I, uh, Captain Keith Lake at uh, on uh, Instagram? Yep, on Instagram. Nick, go. are you primarily on Facebook? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram too. It's uh, K 
cap.nickpavlakis on Instagram and uh, on Facebook, you know where to find me. And also, most importantly, I know with everything going on, if you hop in Marine Max St. Petersburg, I live there, so chances are you'll uh, stop by and say, hey, don't be a stranger. There you go. Wear your mask. And don't let that captain tag fool you. Nick's also a salesman and pretty damn good at it. So yeah. give him a call, go down there and buy a boat. <laughs> and I'm sure if you stop by for a boat ride, he could possibly uh, let you um, on board one of those boats and do a sea trial. Uh, so uh, yeah, be sure to check out uh, Marine Max St. Petersburg. Uh, and of course, Marine Max Clearwater to see uh, the homes of Captain Keith and Captain Nick. And uh, they are always at home on YouTube. Uh, if you want to check out all the boating tips videos, you know, Keith mentioned we did a ton of boating tips videos that anything you possibly want to know in terms of, uh, I mean, anything, uh, anchoring, oh, yeah, uh, electronics, I mean, anything you could possibly think of. And we'd love to hear from you guys too. You know, what would you like to see more of and what questions do you have for the captains for future episodes? Uh, we'd love to hear from you. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, guys. We'll see you next uh, the next Monday, yeah. and uh, we'll be sure to ask you some more questions on Boating Tips Live. Oh, cool. thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks for having thanks. us on. We're your thank biggest you. fans. We're your biggest <laughs> fans. And we're your biggest fans. Maybe one day we can be on their show, Lisa, too. Maybe we'll oh. kind of... Oh. That's, that, that, that would be funny, like a Freaky Friday type deal. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have, right. we'll have to make it happen. Cool. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. All right, guys. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Well, Lisa, I think it's time for social. What do you think? All right. I, I totally agree. Let's get with Landon okay. to give us a look at what's going on in the social media world. Landon, hello, hello. social media extraordinaire. What do we got this week? I'm, I'm First of all, I'm honored that anybody would consider me an extraordinaire at anything. So thank <laughs> you for that intro. That was exquisite. Uh, so this week, I've just got one video I want to show you guys. This has been making its round on Facebook and Twitter and Reddit everywhere. Um, adorable video. Uh, basically, months? a six-month and four days baby named Rich Humphrey broke the world record for uh, being the youngest, I guess, person to water ski. Wow. And he looks like he's done it before. <laughs> He it's, looks like a pro. Honestly, he looks <laughs> way better standing up there than I could ever. I love the encouragement too. Yeah, there's yeah. clearly the oh encouragement to stay up, and uh, I the the feet placement is is excellent. Yeah, so his feet were strapped safely to uh, the wooden board. His dad was obviously right there yep. alongside him, but Rich, that is Rich Humphrey right there that that broke the record, six months and four days old. Um, this was posted to his actual instagram i i maybe that's a world record for being the youngest person with an instagram account Possibly. um right and on that's social media yeah and that's kind of where that video was was shared out widely um the well, the caption there was apparently that's a big deal hashtag world record yeah so, so they're saying that the world record is is just the, the youngest child to ever uh water what do they consider this water ski wakeboard water, yeah uh, i think it's so it's technically <laughs> water skiing right and according to this article that I've got pulled up, he beat the record by 23 days. Wow. So oh the previous gosh. record was six months and 27 days. And Rich here was six months and four days. So great. So baby skiing is, is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's just kind of a cool story. Like nobody remembers when they're six months old, right? So yeah. imagine now you're 10, 10 years old and your parents are saying, by the way, you have a world record that you yep. don't remember or we're aware of <laughs> but at that point the child's probably just a a, a star yes. in the world of right. wakeboarding and wake exactly. surfing anyway this, so. this kid's already destined for greatness so yep we'll 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 watch your uh, career with great interest rich way to go rich <laughs> yeah well and uh, maybe one day we'll be able to get him out on a nautique uh, or a master craft and really uh, oh yeah see what Part he's got up. his instagram fame is going to be through the roof by that point for sure for sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I wonder how many followers he has already. I bet it's, uh, uh, it's pretty decent. That's a great question. Uh, almost 10,000. Oh, my gosh. So if you want to follow the adventures of Rich, uh, you can go on Instagram. The The username is Rich Casey Humphreys. Mm -hmm. And you can see all the adorable photos of, of Rich and uh, obviously watch the video. Let's see it one more time. We have to we have to check it out one more time. So you can see, uh, you know, his placement of the feet, uh, just the determination and concentration on his face. Like, 
even that he's like showboating he's kind of like looking away like you know <laughs> ah. smug yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i got this world record in the bag no big deal <laughs> i mean he's he's holding on he's and legitimately speaking yeah for our audio only listeners that are concerned possibly rich has has got the full gear on life jacket very safe um so oh yeah no worries there yeah they're yeah. definitely not going that fast either no. and dad is right there within arm's reach in case anything were ha- were to happen they they uh they definitely disappear and you know what it's got to be a boating family clearly you're you're not getting your six month old out there water skiing unless you as a family have done it before right. and probably started young yourself i remember yep. being a little kid getting towed behind a boat my skis were individual skis but they were like tied together in the middle that's how i learned mm-hmm. to ski so it's not far off from what little baby Rich is doing there. Yeah, it makes me think of the but when you're skiing, skiing, not water skiing, but the French fries and pizza. You know, when you pizza, <laughs> French fries and French pizza. Fries, you kind of go like that. I don't know, Landon. I'm, to slow down and go faster, Landon. I've never heard of that, but it makes total <laughs> sense. Very interesting. Yeah, French so fries get was, you the speed. That was on uh, Lake Powell in Utah. That's uh, that's where that was filmed. So cool awesome. stuff. Cool. Very well, cool stuff. To, uh, the baby skiers, and uh, we'd love to see your 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 team uh, out there, your family and friends getting out, and, and what you guys can do uh, behind the wake boat. We'd love to see that for sure. Even yes. if it's not a world record, no pressure. <laughs> you, you don't have to, you know, reach for the top. I just thought of something. I wonder who the oldest to ever mm. water ski is, too. So yeah. you got the youngest. I wonder. You kind of go to the other end of the spectrum and see, uh, you know. What are they dealing with? Stay tuned for next week. When we come <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's awesome. All right. As a reminder cool. to subscribe, follow, and tag us to keep up to date with boating news and share your boating stories. We mm-hmm. love seeing everybody out on the water, enjoying their time with their families and friends. We are all over the place at Marine Max Leisure on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube at Marine Max Online, Twitter at Marine Max. We also have a, a yachts channel on uh, on Facebook. So if yes. you're interested in seeing bigger boats, I mean, who's not? Uh, at Marine Max Yachts is out there as well. Um, any final words, Mr. Kelly Berry? Um, no, I think that that's a really cool, uh, that's a really cool shot. And, uh, you know, of course we do have, uh, the Fort Lauderdale international boat show coming up. So, uh, be sure to uh, check that out if you get an opportunity. And of course we have boat shows going on at every store around the United States, uh, every day of the week. So if you want to check out all the latest boats, uh, check out your Marine Max store. Awesome. Well said, well said. Mr. Landon, what about you? No, fantastic point to that to that point. We're excited to share out social content happening at, at these boat shows as they start rolling out more and more. We'll be on the scene. We'll be doing a, a lot of uh, that social kind of content that you look forward to. So we're excited. Yes, cool. excellent. Tis the season for new new model debuts too. Oh so, man, tis the uh, season. What, what, it's crazy. It's almost the end of the year already. I know. You can see or hear more episodes of Boating, Boating Broadcasts and our sister podcast, Boating Tips Live, on Facebook, YouTube, all the social media channels, on the Marine Max Lifestyles blog, accessible online or through the Marine Max app, or on your favorite podcasting platform. And as Landon mentioned earlier to me, uh, we are everywhere. Google, Apple, Amazon, Spotify. Uh, We hope you enjoyed today's boating broadcast. As always, stay healthy and boat happy. We'll see you on the water. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.